Okay, now we're going to be talking about where the line crosses the axes, either the x-axis or the y-axis. Those are called intercepts. Okay, so we've already talked about what the slope of the line is. That's like the tiltedness. Is it going up? Is it going down? Is it straight up and down, flat? But now we're going to be talking about the x and y intercepts. An intercept means where it crosses the axes. I'm going to explain this, but this is extremely important. The y-intercept is when x is 0 and the x-intercept is when y is 0. Okay, so first we're going to look at a graph again, and we're going to determine what the intercepts are. Okay, I'm sorry about the glare here. This purple line is crossing the y-axis right here, and that ordered pair is over 0, up 3. So that y-intercept is 3. And it's crossing the x-axis right here. And that looks like that's at also 3, but this time it's at over 3 up 0. So in this case, both the x and y intercepts are 3. And the reason why the y-intercept is when x is at 0 is because you want to stay on this line, meaning you're not going left or right. You want to stay on that line. So the y-intercept is when x is 0. And the reason why the x-intercept is when y is 0 is because you don't go up or down. You just stay on this line. Okay, so for the blue line, it's crossing at negative 1, 2, th negative 3. So that's over 0, down 3. And this time, for the x-intercept, it's not crossing at a whole number. It's crossing at a, between two numbers. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It looks like 4.5, over 4.5, up 5. But... We're not exactly sure. I mean, over four and a half up zero is what I meant to say. We're not exactly sure if it's four and a half. There's other ways to determine that more algebraically, which we'll talk about um, in another video. But the general idea is um, on a graph, the x-intercept is when it's crossing the x-axis. The y-intercept is when it's crossing the y-axis. Okay, so when we look at a table, we are talking about when x is zero right here, 3, and when y and x-intercept is when y is 0, right here, 3. So this is the, these are the two intercepts. Again, they're both 3. Okay, now, what about this one? I don't see any zeros anywhere. So if you have a table and you're looking for the x and y-intercepts and there is no 0, you're going to have to extend your table. There's other ways to do it, which I'll show you later, but for now, you're just going to extend your table. So you can see that this goes 9, 7, 5, 3. So let's keep going. We're subtracting 2, so it would be 1, and then it would be negative 1. And then this would have to go 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. But notice that I never got to 0, but halfway between 1 and negative 1 is 0. So halfway between 7 and 8 would be 7.5. So this would be 0, 7.5. That would be um, the x is 7.5 and y is 0. So that would be the x-intercept. Now the y-intercept, we're going to have to extend it the other direction up here. So I have uh, 3, 2, 1, 0, and 9, 10, 11. 12, 13, 14, 15. So now I've extended my table where I have 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. And then these are going up by twos. So my y-intercept is up here at 0, 15. And my x-intercept was at between two numbers here, 7.5 and 0. Okay, so that's how you're going to find your intercepts on the graph. It's just where it touches. In a table, it's where each of the other values is 0. And then back to this word problem, it's basically the beginning value. What did it start at? I made a table in the last video, a car travels at 60 miles per hour. So at zero hours, it's gone zero miles. So that y-intercept would be zero, zero. You'd just be starting the graph at zero and going up by 60s. This one is, it starts with $100. So if we graph this our, at zero, zero hours before he started working, he already had $100. So it's 100 is the y-intercept. That's where it started. Here, Sally started with $40, so that is her y-intercept. Her graph would start at 40 and go down by 5, down by 5, down by 5, down by 5, until she was out of money. All right.
So in the next video, we're going to talk about how to put those two things together. But for now, you have learned about the slope, the constant rate of change, and the intercepts where the graph touches the axes.